Hey everybody, welcome back to Christ Church Fort Worth Online. We're so glad that you tuned in with us. If you're here just to let us know, would you drop your name in the comments or drop the name of a friend in the comments so they know we are live as well. There's gonna be a great, awesome message today, a great kids corner. And right now we're gonna start with Pastor Micah and Jess leading us in some worship.
What an incredible worship experience. I just want to say thank you for joining us today online. While church is different, we still believe that God is the same and is doing great things in our lives all across the world. Well, wherever you find yourself, wherever you're watching this, if this happens to be one of your first experiences of Christ Church Fort Worth, would you let us know? Now, you could easily drop a hello down in the comment, but I would rather you right now take your phone and text CCFW guest to the number 97,000. We would love to know that you were online with us today and we'd love to connect with you in any way that we can as well today. Maybe as you're viewing this or wherever you find yourself, if you are in a moment of needing prayer, while we may not be able to be with you physically during this time, we want to continue to pray with you. Prayer is a priority, a value to us of a personal encounter with God. So if we can pray with you in any way right now as well, take out your phone and you can simply text CCFW prayer to that same number 97,000 where one of our partners will begin praying with you immediately. Now, as we continue to worship God through giving, we want to invite you during this time that as, as many of us are, are wondering what things are going to be like, we know that as we continue to be faithful to God, He continues to be faithful to us. Many of you have continued to be faithful and obedient and partner your trust with us so that we can continue to do the many things that we do every single week. In fact, I want to let you know right now that your giving is even impacting our kingdom builders all around the world. I want you to see this message from one of our partners right now. Hi Christ Church, this is Kenneth and Alicia McGraw. We are missionaries in Bologna, Italy to university students. I grew up going to Christ Church and so I want to take the opportunity to say thank you so much for all of your faithful support to our ministry. We couldn't do it without you. As you might have heard, Italy's been in the news recently because the entire country is under a strict quarantine. So that means no one can leave the house at all except for absolute necessities. So during this time, since everyone's at home, we've been trying to keep working and keep going after the students digitally. So on their computers, their phones, social media, different things during this time. We're really praying that God would work in this time. Traditionally, Italians are really um, hard-hearted they just are apathetic about spiritual beliefs, about God, and so we're praying that this really difficult season uh, would cause them to have their hearts softened by the Lord and that people would be open to hearing the gospel. So thank you so much for praying for us. We're praying for you guys as well, and um, we just thank you so much. Uh, see you later. We Ciao. love you guys. Ciao. Thanks again for your continued faithfulness and giving. Now, right now, as we prepare for our message, parents in the room, we want you right now to gather your kids together. Get them close. Make sure that they can see the screen. Make sure they can hear what's going on because Pastor Leah has a special message just for them. Hey, can you guys tell me what this is? An apple. You're right. It's an apple, but who knows what's inside of an apple? Seeds. And... 
Does anybody know how many seeds are in here, though? Those, well, the, the, <laughs> you're right. Those are all good guesses, and maybe Google could tell us how many are in here, but I have no idea. Do you guys think that this is enough food for me to eat for a whole week? No. You guys think I would run out? Yes. Probably so. Here's the deal. Sometimes we look at the little thing that we have in our hands. Maybe it's a little bit of food or a little bit of stuff and we forget what God can do with it. You see, this apple has so many seeds inside of it, and every seed can make a tree, and every tree makes more apples, and every apple makes more trees. The amazing thing is that even though it may look like a little bit, God can do a whole lot with it. We just have to trust Him with the little bit that we have. Will you guys pray with me today? Yeah. Why don't you guys repeat this after me? Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. thank you for always taking care of me. I trust you with everything that I have, and I love you so much. Amen. Amen. Now, does anybody want some of my apple? Me. Thank you. Well, what an exciting time it is to be back together again here in our living room. And for those of you joining us, thank you for being with us today for worship. Uh, thank you for staying with us as we look up for a few moments to study the Word of God. And, and thanks for all of you who are partnering in prayer in so many different ways with us. Uh, as I was preparing for this week, I was sitting at my desk uh, right over here, and I looked on the wall, and beside me uh, was this painting that I have beside me. Uh, this painting is uh, very special to me because this was one of the oil paintings that my mother did when, uh, when she was alive. When I was just a young teenager, I remember her painting this picture. It took her several months, actually, to complete this. My mother was really into all the details and trying to get it just right. And uh, this picture, when we look at it, it's obvious that we have a ship. Uh, the, w the wind is blowing the sails to maximum. Uh, the sky and the background is all dark. The waves are beating. It's obvious when you first glance at it that uh, the, the ship is in trouble. It's in the middle of a storm. But when we look at the picture, we only get a part of the reality of the picture. Uh, I remember a Scottish professor who was also a preacher years ago used to write about that in every picture, there is what you see and then there's what you don't see. And what you don't see is just as real as what you do see. And we think about that as an analogy of life, that what we see here is a ship that's in trouble. But what we don't see is that maybe just outside of the picture is a land. Maybe the ship has been already traveling through the storm and it's almost to the land where it's going to find safety and where it's going to find shelter. But we don't see that because our vision is limited to what's in the painting. And I, I take that in parallel to where we are today as a nation and as people and recognizing that we're in the middle of a storm. We're in a storm that's a physical storm, a storm that for many is a financial storm. It's the unknown. It's the uncontrollable that kind of rocks our world. And so when we get there, we need to decide that we're not going to just focus on what we see, but we're also going to focus on what we don't see. And that's where we come today to a passage of Scripture in the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus is teaching in, in a very familiar passage of Scripture called the Sermon on the Mount. And, and in Matthew chapter 6, th this is the way Matthew records the teachings of our Lord Jesus. Matthew says in verse 25, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not your life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? And then he says these words, Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life. And then we get to verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? Come on now, <laughs> right? 
Why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But look at verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things. In other words, the food, the clothes that you need, stuff to drink, all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, verse 34, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's some pretty powerful words. And I'd like to unwrap them for just a moment with, with two thoughts that are actually commands that Jesus gives us in these nine verses. The first command is a negative. In other words, something we're not supposed to do. And he says it three times in this short passage of Scripture. Three times he says, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. He starts in verse 24, I tell you, do not worry. In verse 31, do not worry. Verse 34, he ends by saying, do not worry. Do not worry. Now, I don't think Jesus was just giving us some pie in the sky theology like, okay, let's all just be happy. I think think there's something bigger to the scene here. I think what he's saying is don't let worry control your life. And it's interesting because he prefaces it with both in the beginning and the end with this word, therefore, Mm -hmm. therefore, do not worry. Therefore, do not worry. I I remember in in Bible school taking Bible, they taught me when you see the word, therefore, you need to ask yourself, what's it there for? Right. Right? And so you kind of go, okay, so why does he say therefore? Well, it means that what he has said before that builds the argument for why you don't have to worry. And so if you look at Matthew chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 6, you see that what Jesus is unpacking for us is this beautiful picture of the character and the kingdom of God. And he tells us God is this loving heavenly father who loves us, who wants to care for us, who wants to provide for us. And because we understand who God is, therefore, you don't have to worry. Now, Peter says it this way in 1 Peter chapter 5. Peter says, give all of your worries to God. Give all of your worries and all of your cares to God, for he cares for you. Wow. That's why I don't have to live controlled by worry, because I'm giving my worries to God, and I know God cares for me. So I see outside the picture that God cares for me. God loves me. And guess what? God has the capabilities and the resources that I don't have. As a father, as a grandfather, I love my kids and I love my grandkids and I want to help them and I want to love on them. But there are some things I can't do for them because I just don't have those resources. When I was talking with a parent the other day whose child was sick and they were talking about how hard it was for them because it was their firstborn, their little baby had just gotten a little cold and they were struggling with, we just couldn't do much. And the pain that some of us remember as a parent when you hold your child and they're hurting and you know, hey, this is just going to take a little process because our, we are limited, but our heavenly father who loves us and cares for us has all the resources that we're ever going to need. So therefore, we do not worry. But instead of worry, Jesus gives us a second command of what we should do, and that is seek first his kingdom. You see, that's what solves the worrying. I can't go, I won't worry, I won't worry, I won't worry, I won't worry, because if I focus on not worrying, I'm going to worry about not worrying. Right? Right? 
<laughs> Isn't that the way it works? It's kind of like, don't think about the purple elephant. Right. And immediately we're all seeing a purple elephant, right? right. Got that, Joe, huh? Yeah. Right. So what you, Jesus says is three times, do not worry. But then he says, here's the key. Instead of worrying about what you don't have or what you lack, seek the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God. Now, how do we do that and why? It's interesting. I read a quote the other day that said, our anxieties reveal our priorities. Yes. Wow, that's good. Wow. Our anxieties reveal our priorities. So if our priority is our comfort, our health, and our wealth, well, then we're going to be anxious about anything that threatens our comfort, health, or wealth. But if our priority is God's kingdom coming down to earth, God's will being done on earth, if that's what my priority is, well, then the fact that I'm not comfortable at the moment or the fact that my stocks are down or the fact that, hey, you know what? I may have to do something I'm not used to doing and change my habits. It doesn't upset me to an extreme and it doesn't just ruin my whole life because that wasn't my priority anyway. My priority was seeking the kingdom of God. Yes. I was, it was interesting because in the last few days, I, I took a few moments and read a little bit about church history. And uh, it's interesting that historians, both inside and outside of the church, when they look at the early spread of Christianity, they, they all are united on, on one fact that seemed to be the motivation for the incredible spread of Christianity around the world in a very short period of time. And unanimously, they say that the motivation for that was the compassion and the care that the followers of Christ had for the poor and the sick. In fact, one history professor at Notre Dame University said that it was an epidemic that seemed like the end of the world that actually promoted the rise of Christianity. And when I read that this last week, I thought, wow. For those of us who have been praying for God's kingdom to come, for revival to hit our nation and our world, it may just be that the way God answers that prayer is not the way we thought He should do it. Maybe God is allowing something to happen that is all of a sudden forcing humanity to realize we yes. can't control everything. Yeah. Yeah. We're not as smart as we thought we were. We don't have as much medical advancements as we thought we did. And because we suddenly come face to face with our limitations, yes. we turn to God yes. and we yes. say, God, you're the answer. Yes. Yes. You're the only answer. Yes. And for those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ, Maybe it's time that we decide as the way we seek his kingdom is we start looking around us instead of looking at our lack. We start looking at those around us who are hurting. Those who maybe aren't able to get to the grocery store to get groceries. And maybe we could be an extension of the kingdom of God to them by buying a bag of groceries and leaving it on their doorstep. Maybe we could be. God's kingdom for that person who's financially challenged at the moment by saying, hey, we could help out to meet their rent payment. Yes. Yes. You see, what would happen if every follower of Christ said, we're going to seek God's kingdom on earth through us. And when we start doing that, we stop worrying so much about us and we start seeing God's kingdom come to earth. So I want to ask you to join me today. I want, I want us to pray together that God would reveal to us what we could do to see God's kingdom coming to earth. That we as a group could pray together. And those of you watching us online, we invite you to pray with us right now. And, and if you have a prayer need that you would like to share with us, right below me, there's a place there where you can go to and share with us your, your prayer needs. And I promise you, that some of our team will be lifting up those needs before the Lord. We'd love to connect with you and pray with you and let you know that God loves you and that God wants to provide for you. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come right now before you. 
God, I thank you for this opportunity to worship together and to experience your presence. Lord, I thank you that you are a loving Heavenly Father. You care for your children. And Lord, you want to provide for us. Lord, I pray that you would allow us to think outside of ourselves and that we would make the, our priorities your priorities, that your kingdom and your will would become the priorities of our life and that our lives would be marked by care and by compassion. I claim that today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, everybody. Thanks again for worshiping with us today. I know you enjoyed it. If you need prayer or if you want to give in today's offering, both those links are going to be below me right now. You can follow those. Don't forget to invite somebody to join you next week to our watch party so they can worship with us. Have a great rest of the week. We'll see you soon.